Hello and welcome to the Overland Journal podcast. I'm your host, Scott Brady, and I'm here with my co-host, Matt Scott. And Matt, what are we going to talk about today? Why you should never buy a Toyota Tacoma (laughs) or alternative title, why full-size trucks are something you should seriously consider. I mean, I think the biggest problem that a lot of Overlanders have is carrying too much crap. And I think the only reason that we say you shouldn't, I mean, like, Technically, the technical reason as to why you shouldn't is your over gross vehicle weight rating on the on for whatever platform you've chose. And a lot of these small trucks, you know, you're, you're talking sub thousand pounds for for some. You're talking yes. 1100, 1200, you know, Gladiator and Ranger like they when, get better. They yeah, get better when properly configured 16, 1700 pounds. Um, and that really quickly goes. Like it does that that's not including people. That's not including the stuff that people need where you look at these full size trucks and you're like doubling, tripling, quadrupling that you could put the compact pickup in the back of the full size. Yeah. Truck. There's yeah. that much payload. So if you are somebody who literally brings the kitchen sink, I guess everybody in, in America with, with, with trucks kind of has a thing. Like I'm a Ford guy. I don't, I don't know. Ram, I would say it's a Ram for me. Yeah. yeah like I, I'm a, I'm a Ford guy, but I wouldn't buy a Ford right now. I think that the Rams are fantastic for off-road use. I mean, they don't get the rear locker, but the coils and everything, they just, they really seem like a big Jeep, I guess. But, um, and that makes sense because you've got the same company that designs Jeeps, right? Yeah. Uh, so there, there's certainly some heritage that's there. Yeah. So let's, let's start off on, 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 I guess, why, why a full size, you know, we've already talked about payload, but let's also talk about how these things are built, right? I mean, full size trucks are built for everything from a mine site to a construction site. Like they have to be able to put up with a guy that isn't treating this like an enthusiast vehicle. They're treating it like a piece of equipment. They're treating it like a piece of, yeah, it's a commercial yeah, grade piece of equipment. Yeah. And they're just built pretty tough. Like let, let's think even Jeeps, right? Jeeps are relatively durable these days. You're still upgrading tie rods. A lot of people are still upgrading axles to go to bigger tires. Like, you know, going to forties on the gladiator is now the big thing at a cost of $20,000 for Dynatrack axles, where you're actually getting something stronger on a 2,500 that will fit forties with AEV fender flares out of the box. It will. Um, and we're intentionally excluding like the 1500 trucks. I think a Ford F-150 is a great vehicle. Yeah. A Dodge Ram 1500, absolutely great vehicle, but they, they aren't that much different in payload from like a Gladiator or a Ranger, but then you have a much bigger vehicle. Yeah. So we're really focusing on those three quarter ton, one ton plus trucks that can be built to be super capable, but then also carry 4,000, 3,000, 5,000 pounds of stuff that's actually capable of, uh, you know, an actual conversion for expedition use. I mean, I, I, I guess I've just, I've, I've mentioned it before, but I've seen so many people that build up Tacomas, um, you know, a, a, a good buddy of mine, um, just build up, uh, built up a Hilux, um, you know, put a four wheel camper with a flatbed on it. And it like didn't move up hills because it has like 80 horsepower, right. You know, replaced it with a Tundra. And, and, and again, to, to talk about that kind of ha- I guess we're calling them half ton trucks, even right. though some of these things can tow 13,000 pounds now. Right. Maybe that's a different podcast, but you know, a lot of these trucks share a cab, sure. share a lot of components. The F one fifty and the F two fifty have the same cab. Um, I want to say the Ram now has a different cab, but it does, yeah. but eventually it will have the 1500 cab because it's just, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so 1500, whatever we're going to call those things, we'll definitely chat about that later, but you know, there's, these things are durable. They, they have a lot of storage. I mean, you're, you're, you're jumping from five foot, maybe six foot beds on the, you know, the, the quarter ton trucks. Again, these things are all, th- these numbers mean nothing, now, yeah, yeah. but you know, you're jumping to a wider bed, you're jumping to a longer bed, you know, and that just gives you, I think the, the flexibility of options or even doing a cab chassis, which gives you totally, totally flat rails, 
It allows you to fit custom camper units like from Nimble or Earth Cruiser. Uh, and when we talk about reliability and durability, uh, we take a lot into consideration around use. So durability is different from reliability. It's how long will this thing endure yeah. at full payload? So if you take a full-size truck and you put a camper on the back of it, particularly a 3,500, you're so far under gross vehicle weight that the vehicle is not being stressed. Not at all. It's used to be, it's used to carrying cords of wood, right? I mean, it's, we're talking about not overdoing it. And that's the challenge with a lot of these small pickups is that by the time you get them done and you put people and food and water and the dog in it, you could be a thousand pounds over gross vehicle weight quite easily. I mean, you know, we've used, we, we always kind of use the Tacoma, I guess, as the comparison. They're about a 1200 pound payload. Well, then you put, you know, a 150 pound bumper on the front, you put a winch on the front bumpers, sliders, all the stuff that these vehicles don't come equipped with. And well, you haven't even put your tent or your people in it and you're, <laughs> you're, pretty, yeah, much you're there. pretty much there. Also, I think fuel range is a big thing. You know, a lot of these diesel trucks get pretty darn good gas mileage. Um, a lot of the, you know, quarter ton stuff that, that I've driven, even my gladiator, you know, the gladiator varies wildly between, you know, 15 miles to the gallon and 20 miles to the gallon. But my F-250 I had before this, and this was a even, this was the older generation F-250. I could get 18 in that like all day long when <laughs> yeah. loaded up, you know, it, it just, it, it really wasn't a, wasn't an issue. And that thing had a, had a 50 gallon tank. I, I remember I, I had a long-term test, a Dodge Ram 2,500 with forties on it. So it was an AEV yeah. project vehicle and it had the diesel. And I just remember Doing, I was driving it back from Montana and I'm just cruising down the road. I don't want to overdo it. I mean, it is a truck on forties, right? Yeah. But I'm just cruising down the road. And I remember after the second or third fill up, um, which is, that's all it took about to get back to Arizona. But I remember looking down at the gas mileage. I was getting almost 18 miles of the gallon on, on a truck tires. with 40 inch tire. That's incredible. Yeah. Like a 17.5, 17.6 average miles per gallon. Now this was mostly on the highway, but this is a huge vehicle with a proper bumper and winch, snorkel, 40-inch tall tires, tons of ground clearance. And we're starting to see more and more of them on the trail because I think what's happened is the Jeeps have gotten really big too. Yep. So that if you look at a at a gladiator that's a hundred and thirty something inch wheelbase, you can get regular cab full size trucks that are around a hundred and thirty something inch. Yeah, and, and they're not that much wider. I, I think that the the use of space is arguably much better on a full size truck because you're you're pushing the cab all the way out just just past the past the tires where on the Jeep, you know, you have these full with axles that, you know, you're then spacing the tires out and the, you know, the, the edge of the tire to, to the edge of the door can be 12 to 18 inches. Sure. Um, that's space that, you know, I, I have to say uh, in, in the Jeep, I would, I would love to have the capability that that vehicles off, offers with that use of space. And that's what's called a power wagon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. And I think you end up with a lot of flexibility in the full size trucks. You can add additional fuel tanks. I mean, that's one of the challenges, all of the smaller trucks, except for, except for the Chevy Bison, you can't get with a diesel. So you can't really add auxiliary fuel tanks because of EPA regulations. Whereas these full size trucks, they'll have replacement main tanks, they'll have auxiliary tanks. You can end up with a thousand mile range easy on those vehicles. Yeah. And, and the difference was that is they just allow it for diesel. It, it, it's a fuel that doesn't much really more stable. Yeah. It's much more stable. So <laughs> you can get replacement tanks. You can get transfer tanks. Yep. You, know, you can re Titan makes this spare tire thing. I want to say it's 40 gallons that replaces your spare tire. Yeah, it's perfect. And oftentimes that's a, that's a, a cavity that isn't used when you are building a large vehicle because you can't fit the, you can't fit the, you know, larger spare tire up underneath there. Um, that's the thing that I miss. I miss that fuel range. I yeah. Miss, that's really helpful. I miss seeing a thousand miles of range out of a, out of a truck. Like that is, that is just so cool. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, as a, as, as a guy that just built a gladiator that's owned full size stuff before, 
Um, I kind of know that my next step will be a prospector. Yeah. Because they're not actually that much bigger and you're just getting, you get a lot for your money. They're very affordable. If you look at the, in fact, I did that not that long ago because the last of the manual transmission full-size trucks was ending with last year. I think it was the, it like the 2018 model was the last that you could get a Dodge Ram with yeah. a six speed manual. And I remember looking at that and, and fully specced out with the diesel and everything. I was just over 50 grand. And I'm thinking that's the price of a gladiator for a well, lot more truck, a lot more truck. And, you know, they're, they're discounting gladiators now too. I think it's important to, you know, just to say that, you know, Toyota plays a totally different game with their pricing than everybody else does. You see a Toyota for a $50,000 sticker, you're probably paying $50,000 for it. You see a Ford truck for $50,000, you might be able to get it for 35 at some dealership. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of that. There, there's a bit of the game, which I don't know, as a millennial, I kind of, kind of hate that. I just want to be like, this is Tell my price. price yeah. This is my price. The rest of the time you're literally, you're just screwing me. Yeah. Um, so I don't like that about the experience of buying one of these things, but um, I want to say it's like Dennis Dillon up in Idaho is who Mario Donovan at adventure trailers gets all of his trucks from because they're just, they specialize in people flying in, buying them. They're out the door and it, and it's really easy and they keep the volume up. They keep the volume and yeah, 10, $15,000 off. Isn't that unreasonable to see. Um, That's cool. Especially right now. They're also doing like 0% for eight, thousand years on yeah, these things. for the rest so, of your life you pay no, no yeah. interest yeah. yeah so i mean there, there's your there's your price savings right there it's a, but it's a great deal and when we think about overland travel especially international travel which is something that matt and i focus on you can still fit a full-size truck in a container yeah you can fit it in the container with a four-wheel camper if it's a high top container so it's you can still ship a vehicle around the world roll on roll off and we have to remember that even in the developing world, they still get goods and services throughout the country. And that may be done with a Mitsubishi Fuso, but a Fuso is still the size of a full-size U.S. truck. Yeah. So their their roads are going to still be serviced by these mid-size, uh, or they call them you know, like a, a mid-range utility vehicle. So you're going to be able to get a full-size truck into most of the routes around the world. Think of mining vehicles and NGOs and all of that, that are hauling goods and services. They're going to all be larger vehicles. So I don't think that a full size is that much of a restriction. Now, where I do find the full size to be a consideration is either in the really big cities or in the small villages. So if you go into a colonial village in somewhere in Central America or South America, they were never designed for a vehicle that big and you probably won't be able to fit down the streets. You're going to have to park that thing outside of town and walk or take a taxi or a tuk tuk or something like that. But you're not going to be able to take a full size vehicle into uh, the small village villages in the cities. You're going to have to time it right. So goods and services come in late at night or early in the morning. That's when you can drive a full size vehicle. If you're trying to navigate Ulaanbaatar traffic, at five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you're going to wish you were dead. You were yeah. dead. I, I I did it in a Suzuki Jimny and wished I was dead. <laughs> was, so uh, we, you have to really be mindful of the size of the vehicle, um, depending on where you're traveling with it. Yeah. I mean, everything's getting bigger, I think these days. And, and that's definitely the thing that I, I dislike. I mean, I, I, I like smaller vehicles for traveling. I, I know that the gladiator, has those full width axles and stuff. But in the same way that I do complain about, you know, the cab not being matched to those, it does just make it so much more maneuverable and and especially on the trail, smaller, especially on the trail. trail. But yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest risk to a full size truck for an overland traveler, I mean, while they are durable, um, you know, they, they definitely, there are, I think they've gotten better, but there are reliability issues with these. Let's let's use the the Ford 7.3, which I want to... The motor had been sold previously, but let's talk about that 99 to 03, 04 generation. Really, really sought after. The generation just after that with the 6 liter, 
Like you, you can't touch. Yeah. I mean, you know, they had EGR issues. They had turbo issues, turbo issues, a lot of things. And a lot of times to service some of the, some of the components on all of these diesel engines, um, you, you have to pull the cab off. So that's like, what's always scared me about like an earth roamer, for example, um, because like earth roamers are very expensive. Um, they're coming down in price on the used market to maybe where I could start to see value for myself on them. But man, what happens when like a rear main seal goes, which is a $2 part. What happens to the truck? I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, is, is that something that some guru mechanic can fix? But I've always been told that you have to take the entire cab off. Sure. And that is not something that somebody's going to know how to do. And, you know, to Jack stand, right? Yeah. Or or wherever, (laughs) wherever you're at. Um, And and that brings up, I mean, are are they a global platform? I don't know. I mean, I I get parts overnighted from my Land Cruiser from Dubai in like two days for $12. So I don't think the parts are necessarily an issue. I think it's finding somebody that actually knows how to work on them. Yeah. And unfortunately, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, they don't really sell these these platforms outside of North America. You're going to find them all throughout throughout, you know, Mexico and Central America, obviously Canada, a little bit in South America, a little bit in Argentina South America, does bring in some But a lot of the, a lot of those are made there. Yeah. Um and they'll run a completely different powertrain. True. Like I remember when I was running Panama Passage, this must have been 10 years ago in Panama, an Argentinian couple came through and, you know, a Super Duty, but it had like a 2 liter engine in it. Yeah. And I'm like, "Wait." Oh. That cannot be fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these things need a big motor and they they're do. really fun when they have that big motor. But I mean, I, I think guess- you kind of, once you decide to bring an obscure vehicle around the world, you have to plan for the fact that you may have to not only fly the parts in, but you may have to fly the mechanic in to fix it. Potentially. Yeah. And, and that's a consideration. If you've got a, a very modern vehicle that can't be self-serviced or requires special tools or special training or even special instruments in order to do that service. You've kind of just got to, from the very beginning, realize that I'm not driving a sprinter that is sold in almost every country. I'm driving a vehicle that's primarily sold in Canada and the United States. And if, if I am in the middle of Southeast Asia, or if I'm, if I'm crossing Russia, it might be possible that I need to fly somebody in with the parts to do the service. I mean, you know, luckily the parts for these things aren't terribly expensive. No, they're not. You know, yeah. they, they make millions of them. Um, so there's economies of scale there, but you know, I, I think, you know, for people that are listening to this podcast that, you know, maybe they want to do, you know, the Pan American highway, or they want to really explore the U S and Canada. Perfect. Perfect. I mean, like, I love the new Rams. You can get like a 60 gallon fuel tank from the yeah. factory. I, I don't know. I, I, I love fuel range. Um, it's just one less thing to have to worry about. And it honestly, takes a lot of stress out of it. Yeah. And honestly, with these, with these vehicles getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's just less that you have to stop to try and find that little gas station. So, and, and you've got to do some research yourself on the legalities of making changes to these modern diesels, but there are kits available for some of these diesels they are called farm kits. They remove the, the catalytic converter, they remove the DEF system because they're designed to be used off the road only. Uh, once you've left the United States, EPA no longer applies. So do some research, understand the legalities of the countries that you're going into, but it is possible to still use these modern diesels. Yeah, even with factory parts. <clears throat> That's I mean, right. Ford has Ford sells the 6.7 in the United States at one power rating and they sell it in Mexico at another power rating and it doesn't require DEF. I I haven't looked into that in a few years. That was for, for my 2016, but I I never really advocate for deleting emissions because it's like, I don't know, like a $250,000 fine. And the environment is something that we should save. Yeah. You definitely don't want to do it in the United States, but there are provisions for some of this for international travel. It's worth looking into if you're concerned about taking one of these diesels internationally. And we also have things like the, you know, the Ford F-250 and 350 now offer a 7.3 gas engine, really compact push rod V8, huge, should be super reliable. It's, I mean, it's a big, it's a replacement for their V10. It's a big, just 
earth moving, earth gas moving, <laughs> unstressed engine. Yeah. You know, that the six, four that's in the, the Rams, they've been making that motor forever. Yeah. Those you know, Hemis are great. You, you don't have to have the diesel. I, I do think if you're staying in North America, I don't know, like m- having nearly a thousand foot pounds of torque is awesome. It's kind of magical. right? <laughs> it's, it's really great. Um, you know, and, and again, a lot of times these look at, look at what you're doing, you know, I like big tires on my vehicles because my Greyhound doesn't like bumps. And, um, you know, if you're, again, you're, I'm using the Tacoma or Ranger or anything, you're going to struggle to put 33s in those vehicles and you're going to spend some money to do it. You might be able to fit a 37 on a lot of these new trucks. I mean, AVs put in forties on them. They are. And and they handle it just fine. So It's, it's incredible how well they handle it. Yeah. And one of the things I noticed the first time, I tested properly tested a full size truck. So this was, this was maybe eight years ago or so. And I got my hands on a power wagon and I picked it up and I'm driving out to California and I was maybe a couple hours into the drive. And I was realizing that this might be the most comfortable vehicle I've ever driven on the highway. They're really nice because it was, it was reasonably quiet, Yep, but it was so roomy. You just, you felt like you were in a Burka lounger going down I 10 <laughs> So Some really of these vehicles are really luxurious. Um, you're getting massage seats in them. Really? Oh yeah. no, it sounds yeah. terrible. <laughs> but, <laughs> sounds maybe great. because I've never had a car with massaging seats. But I, yeah, don't but knock, the, yeah, they don't knock it till you've tried it. Yeah, I got you. I got um, you. But they're great grand touring vehicles. I mean, for something that for something that is meant to spend time in, that is what these vehicles are. These are mobile offices. I mean. Think of the F-150 Ford a few days prior to this podcast released. I want to say the 14th generation of the F-150. Generally for Ford, that leads the innovation. And then that will trickle down into um, their Super Duty lineup. But we're talking like seats that turn into beds like first class. I saw that. That was impressive. And, um, a the, the center console like folds forward to create a desk. Yep. You know, these vehicles are meant to spend time in as an office. And I think as an overlander, that's, that's what I miss about, about having a full size vehicle is there's like 12 cup holders. There's, there's a cup holder everywhere. Like if you think about it, it will literally appear. <laughs> there, there's places to put everything imaginable and, and they're, they're spacious. They're nice. And they probably receive a lot of thoughtful engineering dollars behind them because they're such they're so important to these brands, these yeah. North American brands. Yeah. So I think it seems like they really take the time to engineer them though. Well, so a question for you, Matt. So you owned a full size Ford. What did you like about it? What were the modifications that you did to it? You know, how did it work for you? Uh, I regret selling it. So I had a out of 2016. F two fifty with the diesel. That was the last of that um, body style that had been around since the late nineties. Um, you know, I, I put it on thirty sevens. I, I did like a four and a half inch icon lift. Um, you know, four and a half inches is a lot for me, but I think it's all relative to the size of the vehicle. Um, you know, a Tacoma on two inches is probably like About a full size truck, right? I mean, you know, think you, you got to think size. Um, I did 37s. Um, I did a Titan tank on it, which I want to say was like 57 gallons. Don't hold me to that, but it was, it was a lot of stuff. Did a Lightner rack, did a Rhino rack on the cab. It was great. You know, it was the King ranch model. I, I, I bought it from a dealership in Phoenix in the summer. I think I paid 54 out the door and it had a 66 sticker on it. Um, now granted that was the last year, but now these deals are commonplace. Um, you know, I, I really liked it. The things I didn't like about it, um, it it was a bit cumbersome to drive, but that was the old body style. I've, I've driven a lot of the newer stuff and they're definitely better, you know, get used to turning that wheel multiple times. You know, they're not like this small, easily maneuverable car. Um, but they can be very capable off-road. They can be very fast because they, they definitely do not lack power. I like it. I mean, did you take it on the trail much? I've never really described myself as a wheeler. Yeah. Um, you know, so I didn't do any like obstacle, major technical stuff with it. You know, we had it down in Baja a few times. We had it in Sonora. We had it in the dunes. 
Um, you know, I chased the rebel rally with it. So that entire course we did. And how did it do with that? Um, down a set of uh, tires for that, but it was awesome. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we could carry everything and then be like airborne and doing a hundred mile an hour down these roads. And, you know, some of that stuff was kind of close course and there's no speed limits in Nevada on dirt. So they say, but it would just, it just went, it just worked. You know, sure. my, my thing for full size is if it fits, it gets yeah. like, if, if you can fit the vehicle through it, it it's going to go. I always say that, you know, lockers on full size trucks are helpful, but if you're in a situation where you're like, I need lockers for this vehicle to do the things I do. Maybe I mean, it's the wrong vehicle. Maybe it's the wrong vehicle. I mean, although it was interesting, a couple of years, hot take, but. yeah, a couple years ago, I was in Moab for Easter Jeep and Dave oh, full Dave, size invasion does that every year. Yeah. And Dave Harriton had, he had brought down his single, you know, regular cab, you know, no, no extended cab, just a single cab. 3,500 with a tray back yeah. on 41 inch tall tires. I think maybe even yeah. a little bit bigger than that maybe 42s and he had front and rear lockers for it. Really good ground clearance. And I think he even disconnected the sway bar, but he was really, I mean, and he has spent a lot of time driving the trails in Moab and it, he took it everywhere he wanted it to go. Uh, the only thing he said that was a little creepy with it was, like the tech, the sketchy technical descents because it was so lightly loaded in the rear. Mm, I can see that. He was having the rear end pop up on him pretty aggressively. But other than that, he took that truck everywhere that they were taking the same, the Jeeps, the JKs. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because you can fit a 41 inch tire. Yeah. You Gives know, you a lot of flexibility. They're big, but they're not that much bigger than, than a lot of stuff these days. And I mean, obviously like Dave really, really knows his stuff. He's a phenomenally talented driver and he's he, a good driver. He knows, yeah. I mean, he's like the Enzo Ferrari of overlanding. Like he <laughs> yeah. knows how to build stuff really, really well. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess I still don't think that they're like, like if technical four wheel driving is your thing, it should be a different vehicle. Yeah, probably. I mean, you know, there's a difference between the springs on my gladiator that are made to flex over the boulder yeah. and the springs on the size truck that are meant to carry the boulder. Yeah. Right. For sure. You know, you're going to get to a point where if you're chasing off-road capability, I don't know. I, I know I'm going to get a million people are like, Oh, well, I take my truck down this. I'm like, yeah, that's great. But you know, yeah, they have different purposes. Different and I purpose. think that from a travel perspective, I think the full size has a yeah. lot of merit and, and there's a couple notable models that are available now. The, the tremor package on the Ford super duty. What do you think of that thing? I, I really like it. And the thing that I like most is you can go and you can choose your, you can go and build your vehicle and then you can put the tremor package on. I want to say anything. So if you want a limited or a platinum with massaging seats and these trucks do these days, you can just have that on, on top of it with the diesel rear locking differential. I want to say it has a Torsen style front Torsen style front, really similar to the Raptor. Um, that I had. And honestly, like modern vehicles don't really lack traction. I, I think they're really cool. Love the idea of the diesel, love the idea of the, you know, of that built-in winch. I, it might be an option, but it's definitely on that tremor package. It is, yeah. um, I mean, if you're talking out of the box overlander in the United States right now, it comes with a 33 or 35 inch LT 30, tire, 35 uh, appropriate string, spring rates that you can choose based on your packaging, um, as opposed to the power wagon, which only comes in with, with that Hemi gas motor, which is a good motor. Um, and you know, only has one payload rating. So I think the Ford is, is pretty nice. I mean, a tremor package with a four wheel camper drive it around the world tomorrow. Yeah. It's pretty, um, pretty dialed, ready to go. And if the fact that you could do the seven, three gas motor, if you wanted, yeah. So that's, that's pretty interesting that it, and that's the same way that the, the bison packages, you, you can kind of, you know, bot figure out your ZR2 and then add the bison okay, on top of it. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So that's pretty clever. I think that that's nice to see that as an option. That way you can end up getting the truck that you really want. Yeah. I, I think for the guys that are, um, you know, more wheelers, they want to do more technical stuff. I think that the power wagon is really just, it's a Rubicon XL in a lot of ways. I mean, you get one of those on a lift underneath and it's, 
it's a five link that looks nearly identical to what's on, on a Wrangler. It's a, it, it, it sway looks, bar disconnects everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean for technical stuff as an all around truck, I, I do have to say after owning a gladiator for a year, do I almost regret that I didn't get a power wagon? Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Maybe, um, you know, if there was a power wagon and diesel, I would, I would right. I, that's what I would be driving. Right. But then you also get like the, you know, the cool thing with the Ram is that their payload capacity is just insane. And, you know, on the 2,500, I want to say it's 20,000 pounds of towing now. I mean, it's, I know it's, it's over 30 on the 3,500 when equipped. I mean, you need a CDL for that. Yeah. Basically in the same way that we won the horsepower game, we won the towing game. Sure. You know, so the 2500 I really like because it still has that coil rear. I think that's such a compelling option. You know, a, a Ram 2500 with the coil sprung rear end, regular cab. I mean, that would probably be the vehicle that I would build. It'd be a regular cab 2500 flatbed on it, yeah. four wheel camper, 41 inch tall tires, and, all the and AED they're just stuff. so nice inside. You know, I was, I was sitting on the Rubicon with Jim Morrison, who's now the CEO of Jeep, um, used to be the CEO of Ram, in my opinion, when they really turned around. Um, I, I think pro, their, their older models were kind of, eh, okay. Yeah. they were okay. Like you close the tailgate and, you know, you could hear, you could hear the metal move and it wasn't sure. very nice, but you know, and this is paraphrasing, but essentially they made the gamble. They heard that Ford and Chevy were going to increase the amount of money that they were spending on the interiors of these trucks. Um, so he went and basically said, okay, we're doubling down. And this is general paraphrasing. Don't quote me. Um, so Ram ended up putting a lot of money in, into their interiors um, when everyone else pulled back. Um, so now these manufacturers are really just playing catch up. I mean, I, I've never seen a better interior in a pickup truck than I have in inside of a Ram. I do think the Ford drivetrain is maybe a little bit better. They have that available 10 speed transmission, which is just, you're always in the power band. Sure. Um, but I would do, a, I would do a 2,500. I think you're right. They're so compelling. And, and, and a thousand foot pounds of torque in these things now. That's in the 3,500s. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I mean, the next big step will be, you know turning these things into locomotives, they'll be diesel electric. Yeah. But I can't wait for them to just go electric. I'm, I'm really interested in the cyber truck. I have a pre-order for one in. If you follow Elon Musk on Twitter, he's an interesting cat. And um, somebody, uh, it was either, I want to say it was Tesla put out a rendering of, of a cyber truck with this tent in the back. Yeah. Um, and you know, he responded, yeah, this is actually going to be a thing. We're going to make a camper option out of these. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to have air conditioning, heating, you won't need a dual battery system. They're going to put solar panels on top of that little retractable roof sure. that'll add, I want to say 10 to 15 miles of range a day, which isn't a lot, but for us, if, if you're on slow speed, technical trails, you're not using that much energy anyways, cause right. there's no wind resistance. There's no rolling resistance. Yeah. I, I can't wait for that cyber truck. I mean, I well, and with it being as kind of slab sided and everything yeah. as it is, I, I think it's going to lend itself to some pretty interesting concepts. It's just kooky. You it know, is kooky. I mean, it has over 500 miles of range and accelerates as fast as a mid engine Corvette. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> it kind of yeah. makes everybody else be like, eh. uh, what do we do next? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what would be your, if you were to, if you were to build any full size truck right now, you today. Like, yeah. And no, no budget, no limit, whatever. What would you build? I'd just go buy an earth roamer. Yeah. But if I was to build something, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it would definitely be a Ram 2500. No contest right now for me. Um, I mean, the, the tremor is really nice and, and I like that stuff, but I, the Rams. And would it be the power wagon or no, would it-, it would be a 2,500. Honestly, like I, you know, everybody loves to say, Oh, I need lockers. I, oh God, I have to have lockers. I'm, yeah. Well, you, you could still put in lockers in. Yeah. I can put lockers in it if I want it. I mean, I, uh, I would do that. I would probably do a, a, a four wheel camper or, or similar in the back. I mean, I like the four wheel camper stuff and I'd send it to AEV. I mean, honestly, I'd just buy a prospector. Like if you have the money and you don't have the time, just. Yeah. Get it delivered that way. Send your check to <laughs> AEV and, and be done. 
that's, that's my thing. Um, you know, I, I, I like the four wheel camper stuff. It's just simple. You can take them out really easily. Right. Um, you know, they're not very pretentious, which I think, um, I like that. What what about you? I think it would be similar. I, I was totally smitten by Dave's 2,500 and we drove a bunch of those prospectors up to uh tuck to yuck tuck. Yeah. And we took, took it on the ice roads. And so I just had, I had days and days of time in those. And then we had a prospector for a couple months. Um, and it's also really important to note that AEV is not sponsoring this podcast. Yeah. We just happen to be, we just happen to be huge fans of what yeah, they, like, what they do. I have AEV stuff on order for my gladiator at full price. Yeah. Like, like yeah. that's, we just happen to really like the products that they make. But I think it would be the 2500 with the coil springs. I would put at least a locker in the rear, uh, probably would put one in the front at the same time, just because while you're doing it. But um, I would I would go with the full AEV suspension. I really like their front bumper a lot. Yeah. Uh, I like the modularity of it. I like the strength of the recovery points and how the winch mounts to it as well. And then, you know, the, the wide, fl- the wide fender, so I could get the 40 inch tall tires on there. At first I thought, I don't know if I would want forties, but once you drive a full size on forties, then you can take it. They're just bigger balloons. I yeah. Think, you know, <laughs> and it's, they're really comfortable on the trail when you air down. Yeah. And I was, I did a lot of the local trails with it, including our test track. And it, it had no trouble. It was, it was flawless through that yeah. terrain. So, and it, and the reason why I like the bigger tires on the full size trucks is these are heavy vehicles. So you need a lot of flotation if you get into soft surfaces. So exactly. if you get into mud or you get into snow or sand, the, that additional footprint, that flotation is really critical. So it may be like, ah, oh, why would I need forties or 37s on a truck like that? Well, you really start to, you if you're getting, it. if you're getting into anything soft. So there's definitely a reason to have that, but th- yeah, that would be my, my setup flatbed, put a four wheel camper on the back and off you because go. You can use it. They, they fulfill so many different purposes. Like my gladiator, for example, is now a very niche vehicle. You know, there's no you know, truck bed campers for, you know, like slide in style sure. campers for those things. Cause of the way the, the cab's quite tall in relation to the bed. And then, you know, you start putting big tires and stuff on them and you end up with, you know, basically at capacity where everything that we're talking about doing, you, you, you still have the capacity of the gladiator totally fully on built, top of it <laughs> and you can tow with it. Yeah. I think they're pretty versatile Um, and they're actually reasonably priced. If you now any new vehicle is expensive, but if you compare it within the world of new vehicles, what you're getting for the quality, the drivetrain that you're getting, the fact that you can, you can spec out a 2,500 Ram for under 60 grand with four wheel drive and diesel and everything else. That's six. If you're paying 60 for that, you're getting leather and you're getting a lot of options. Yeah. They're really, they're really, I think a great value personally. Yeah. For, for what you're getting. I mean, it's, it's a highly competitive segment. It's arguably like American pickup trucks are arguably the most competitive segment in the automotive industry in the world. Yeah. Right. Um, they, they thrive on innovation. There's multiple parties that are, um, you know, you obviously you have the big three and then you know, there are things like the, the Nissan kind of came in as trying to be in between with an X kind of an in-between truck. So let's talk a little bit about the aftermarket. Obviously we've got ARB makes a bunch of stuff for full size. Now that's yeah. new for them. I, I had, I had one of their modular bumpers on my F two fifty, and it was, it was fantastic. It, aesthetically, it looks good. I think it did look good. Yeah. Um, it, it was really nice. It, it performed well. I guess I didn't really like hit that many things with it, but it looked like you could run it into a mountain and the mountain would lose. (laughs) I I really liked the ARB actually over the AEV um, just because of animal strike protection. They, they had that traditional grill for the front end at the time I was living um, outside of Telluride, Colorado and (laughs) there was elk and there was deer and there was things that were in the road. And yeah, I, I really valued that. Warren has a lot of great bumpers and they options. Um, Although I think the AEV, the newest version of the AEV, they do. I have now seen has that. the yeah. full full. I forgot guard about on. that. I forgot. But about you're right. That. When you would have bought it at that time frame, it wouldn't have had it. Yeah, yeah. Warren does does a, does a full series of bumpers too. Um, 
which, which are, you know, I've never had anything bad from Warren. I mean, I put Warren winches on like everything, everything, <laughs> like, cause it's just one less thing to think about. Um, and as far as guys that are, that are really building these, um, you know, you'll hear us talk about AT overland full disclosure. We are friends with these guys, but I don't think there's another shop that knows building, um, you know, full size, specifically the Rams. I mean, Mario has three like or four of them himself, them himself. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, um, they really know these vehicles. Um, you know, they do four wheel campers. They do a bunch of custom stuff. They're, they're really specialized in, in maximizing the performance and yeah. the round the world suitability of a full size. And then there's a bunch of, well, there's of course the earth, earth roamers of the world, but then between that, there are camper modules that can be fitted. So like earth cruiser makes an EXD. So we, you've got nimble and nimble came from XP camper and has seen a lot of improvements. Yeah. Those are like the XPs on XP campers or nimble campers now on a full size truck. Um, that's a, that's a great option. I really, I've traveled with some people on those and, and they love them. Um, I, I would say they're a step above a four wheel camper in terms of price and, and features, you know, you're, you're looking at more hard sided sure. or, you know, kind of origami, almost origami yeah. style <laughs> things. Um, a little bit more modern design maybe, but, and no. then of course, four, four wheel campers, which you see them everywhere. They're yeah. Super I mean, popular. it's, you know, it, that's peanut butter and jelly for an American truck. Um, and then you have all the, the wedge campers. I mean, like go fast campers. Um, I, I think the one of note is the, uh, 5010 camper by goose gear. Brian Looks over really there good. has a, I don't what, what do you call the, all of these manufacturers keep changing the things like it used to be crew cab <laughs> and then it was like super cab. I don't know. He has the one that has mega cab, but <laughs> has an actual door and then a smaller door. Yeah. So it's um, like an extended cab, extended cab. Yes. We'll <laughs> call it that. Um, he has one of those with the, with the 5010 camper and it's all built out inside. It looks really good. I have to say yeah. aesthetically, other than maybe the front bumper, that's one of the best looking full sizes I've seen. Yeah. It's really and we'll, nice. we'll post a picture of that in the show notes. It's flexed out at it. Yeah. Overland Chris Expo. took all those photos. Yeah. I remember, I remember like it was at the end of Overland Expo East last year, um, 2019, yeah. because we won't have shows for a long time. And I'm watching this truck like flex through this stuff. And I want to say he, you know, he has icon suspension or something on it. It's really good. It, it was impressive. It, fits, yeah. it gets, Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll kind of leave it at that. You know, full size trucks are definitely something I, I think more people should consider as smaller cars kind of bloat. The size difference between them is less than you'd think. Yeah. The, the difference in size between a gladiator and a Ram 2500 is not that much. No, I remember Chris Cortez had his excursion park next to my gladiator. And I want to say my gladiator was longer, longer, longer wheelbase for sure. Longer wheelbase for sure. I mean, I remember when that was just a massive vehicle and yeah. now I'm like, Oh, I like my gladiator. It's so small. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think that they, you know, particularly for people that maybe are getting to the end of the road as far as their Tacoma, Colorado, whatever goes, I think it's kind of inevitable but that that full size kind of becomes the future in the U.S. It, it will for those that that pack heavy, for those that want yeah. a lot of features that for those that want a camper, if you if you go with a simple roof tent or you're you're a backpacker and you're able to just throw a ground 10 in the back, then these small vehicles are still great because yeah. you gain a lot of advantage with that, a lot of performance. But if you want to put everything in the, and the kitchen sink, then maybe consider a full size next time. Yeah. Well, take care guys. Um, Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.